Um, we got everybody. Beard looks good. There's an update. I cut my hair and my beard. This is why I'm wearing a hat. You see, if I, if I show you, I shaved my beard myself. I did an okay job. I look a bit more presentable. My hair, on the other hand, I fucked it up. Let me show you my hair. Look at this shit. <laughs> so, right here, it's... My girlfriend told me, she's like, you literally worked and then you stopped. And it's just, I even did the back of my neck myself. I just got the machine. I was just like, nah, nah. so I don't, I don't, it's probably a disaster. I have no idea what it looks like. So this is, this is my own hair. And then to, to add more confidence to the situation, look how I look like, like basically my hair is on the sides. It's done. And then on this, on here, it's not. So I look like a mushroom head. And then uh, I did this. I acted like a barber. I put my hands in here and then I just snipped off some bits. So overall, pretty much a disaster. But it doesn't matter because I feel great because my hair was bothering the hell out of me. I was this close to shaving it all off. So now I think with the hat, I look pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? If we get this video to a thousand viewers, would you shave your head? Fuck yeah. Yeah, I would. For a thousand though? We're almost at a thousand. I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. Sure. If it's a goal for you and you have that power, get us up to a thousand viewers on average throughout the episode. I'll shave my head. I'll do it on the stream. Fresh from Data Salib. Thank you, Sharbil Masad. That's hilarious. All right, guys, let's start the show. So before we bring our special guest on tonight, as you know, for those who might be joining us for the first time, the way the podcast works, I talk about a few things and then we bring in our guest. The other day, I remembered something uh, very, very, very funny. Uh, do you guys remember, I don't know if you have this, when you grow up, there are certain things that are completely a blur, right? Like for me, I just, there's things from my childhood I don't remember. Plus I was a stupid kid. I, I never, you needed to explain things to me. Like I didn't know. And my best friend, Abiy Haddad, um, we, we turned out to have this in common. When I was young, I thought commercials on TV were acted live every single time. And I used to sit and watch the commercials and look to see where they messed up. And I'm like, these people are amazing. Like, they, they nail it every single time. Nobody told me, you know, like, I didn't understand that you could film something, whatever. So if you didn't tell me stuff, I wouldn't know. I didn't know you couldn't fly. Nobody said you can't fly. So I didn't suppose, I pretty much supposed you could. It was just like, how? Right? There must be a crystal or something or Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina candle, something you inhale that you can fly. If you don't know what I'm talking about, about the Gwyneth Paltrow vagina candle, that's not a weird sexist joke. Google it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and, uh, you know, I just, I felt like, thanks, JK1231 for the follow. I just felt like if nobody explained something to me, I didn't know. Okay? So I wasn't a very bright kid, but I had a great imagination as a result. Anyways. I don't have many things that I remember solidly. I remember that I that I, I told that story, the most embarrassing story in my life. I remember that. Um, but it feels like a weird dream, right? But there is some weird things from my childhood that I remember very vividly. Um, child abuse? No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> that, was, that was such a bad joke. I'm sorry. I, it's just, it's not that they were traumatic. Like, I remember things that, traumatic things you will remember. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about random, weird things that you remember from your childhood. I don't know if you guys have ever had that experience. Let me give you an example. I, who Everybody knows uh, Michael Jackson's song, It Don't Matter If You're Black or White, right? That was the, the song, <laughs> right? That was the, the Michael Jackson thing. Everybody knows that song, obviously. I remember watching an episode of something. The most obscure, like some cartoon kids thing on TV. They were wearing costumes and the guy goes, it don't matter if you're black or white. And then this guy jumps in in an alien suit and he's like, oh, purple or blue with polka dots too. That It only happened once. And I've never forgotten that fucking song. It sticks in my mind, right? I don't know why. It's very weird. I have a thing called aphantasia. And aphantasia means you don't have a visual memory, so I can't see things. So when somebody says, like, close your eyes and imagine that you're on an ocean and the waves are... I don't see anything. I thought that you actually, like, it's just an emotion. Like, imagine you're on the ocean. Some people can see that shit. Like, if you tell people, imagine a green apple and they close their eyes, they'll see a green apple. I just see black. 
So I have a weird memory. I don't know why that song sticks out. Another song that sticks out, and this is the whole point of me telling you this, I don't know why it sticks out, but I thought maybe I would send this appeal into the internet. I think I would cry so happily. I think this would be the theme song of my life. I would, if somebody can find this, I would probably walk out to this song at every song, at every show that I do in my next tour. This is a song when I was a kid, and if anybody can find this song, I've searched the internet, I've searched everywhere, I cannot find it, okay? Somebody's asking, how can you have a good imagination and not be able to visualize stuff? The op hero, and Leichstein, thanks for the follow. It's actually, let me, sh so having incredible imagination, if you ever see my stand-up comedy, I actually speak in emotion. So if I'm saying something, I don't say like he punched him in the face and you could see the bruising and the purple and the what I'll be like is like he punched him in the face like he wrecked an entire. It felt like when he got punched in the face, it felt like his entire world collapsed. A lot of my analogies are based off of emotion. That's why, thankfully, it turns out a lot of my comedy is is relatable to lots of people because I don't go into specific visual examples. I go into into what it feels like. And we all share that. Anyways, so here's the song. When I was a kid, all right, and I went to school, there was a, a campaign that um, they had for, you know, treating the environment better. Back when it was considered not a debate that we should be better with our environment. Apparently now, poor people fight for the oil companies. America's... The, <sighs> people in America... There are people, there are people in America that are so incredibly stupid that it hurts me and really all over the world who have somehow been duped into saying climate change is a hoax and that we shouldn't take care of our environment. It boggles my mind that somebody who could, I don't know, an everyday person, somebody who works at Subway making sandwiches, somebody who has a company, somebody from all, why what, you breathe the air? So fix the environment. It, 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 Anyways, okay. So there was a campaign when I was a kid when it was not, uh, when it was not, they're protesting a virus. The, 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 the stupidity in America, we, we have a president who says drink bleach, so don't be surprised. And people, somebody voted that motherfucker into power, so that's how it is. Okay. Now, uh, before it was controversial to love the environment, I was a kid in America, and they were doing a campaign to encourage people to. <laughs> To take care of the environment, when you go to the supermarket, bring your own bag. That was the message. That was the message, and it's a great message. Instead of taking new bags and then throwing away, and that plastic, it's not biodegradable. It ruins the, the, the world, ruins our oceans. It ends up in the oceans, and we know about this, and all of the, the marine life gets stuck on these plastics, and it ruins our environment reuse the same bag so instead of going to the supermarket and getting a new bag bring your own bag and they wanted to drive it home for kids and if anyone can find this song i will be the happiest man on the planet i will walk out to this sh song in every show of my next world tour and here was the song and it would say it's it was it bring your own bag down to the market this is how it would go i remember it exactly Bring your own bag down to the market. Bring your own bag, save your own tree. Bring your own bag, no paper, no plastic. Bring your own bag, save your own tree. So it had that vibe, right? But this was what was amazing about that song. This is the greatest part about that song. You'd have the song and it would be, you know, bring your own bag down to the market, bring your own. And then in the middle of the song, they'd have like a, like a pause for, for like for a sketch to play out. And it it's like, a real life thing and this guy is like beep you hear it beeping on a supermarket bing bing they ring the bell and then she goes hello sir so this guy's obviously at the supermarket she goes hello sir uh will that be paper or plastic and then he goes no i brought my own bag and then it goes up an octave and it's like bring your own bag down to the market bring your own bag save your own tree <laughs> <And it's, it laughs> like Halfway through the song, it just elevates. Just like, no, thank you. I brought my own bag. Da -da. And bring your own bag down to the market. Like, progress. Yeah. I need this song. Internet, do your thing, please. I'm begging you. If somebody can find this song, 
because it was the catchiest fucking tune in the world. And I think if we can take that song, if somebody gets me that song, I will sample it. I will put guitar over it. And I will, I promise you all, if somebody can find this, bring your own bag down to the market, I will, I will make things with this song. I will apply it to every situation in life. I will, it will be worth your while. I'm begging you, find me that song. If you can, because I cannot, I have tried so hard because I want to jam again to bring your own bag down to the market, bring your own bag, save your own dream, bring your own bag, no paper, no plastics, bring your own bag, save your own dream, yeah. It's just, it's funny what you remember from your childhood. I don't remember other things. Do you remember what channel was broadcast? It wasn't broadcast, it was a campaign that they were doing and they brought cassette tapes to the school and they and they give it to the thing. Wait, did somebody find it? Wait, 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 wait. Did somebody did it somebody actually find the shit? Hold on. Oh my god! Oh my god, I think this is it! Holy shit! Hold on, hold on. Thank you. Will that be paper? Oh my god, holy shit, this is it. How did you find it? This is it! <laughs> what? Check out mine at the market, waiting to check my groceries. Check out clerk says paper or plastic. I say no thanks, be wild be. Bring your own bag down to the market. Bring your own bag for your groceries. Bring your own bag, no paper, no plastic. Bring your own bag, save your own trees. I didn't remember the BYOB part. This is amazing. This is long ago oh, this paper was standing in the life of an old growth tree. It came down in the flick of a chainsaw, became bags at the bag factory. Bring your own bag down to the market. Hey! Bring your own bag with your groceries. Bring your own bag, no paper, no plastic. Bring your own bag, save your own trees. Uh. Bring your own Yes! I can't believe I get to jam to this song! <laughs> this plastic bag is fresh from a fossil floundering. Are you seeing the lyrics? Do you see this shit? Destined now to leech in a landfill, it will outlive you and me. Bring your own bag down to the market. Bring your own bag. No plastic. Bring your own bag and save your own seas. Bring your own bag, be wild. Be. Here's a part. Here, there should be a part here where they do the skip. There it is. No, thank you. I brought my own bag. Yes. Yes. Waiting at the checkout. Oh, he doesn't go up though. Waiting to check my groceries. Checkout clerk says paper or plastic. I say no thanks. B Y O B. Bring your own bag down to the market. Bring your own bag for your groceries. Hey. Bring your own bag, no paper, no plastic. What? Bring your own bag, save your own trees. Bring your own bag, save your own trees. Bring your own bag, save your own seas. Bring your own bag, B Y O B. Yeah. Hey. No, I was going to jam with you. Okay, whatever. That was great. Man, what is this? Who the hell is Bill Oliver? Echo Troubadour. He's an eco Troubadour? He's an eco Troubadour. What? I didn't even know that was a thing you could be. So a Troubadour is a French medieval lyric poet composing and singing in Provençal in the 11th to 13th centuries. He's a time traveler for the, ec for the, for ecology. From half to have a habitat by Bill Oliver and the Otter Space Band. Yo, with Glenn Waldick. Bill Oliver and the Otter Space, instead of Outer Space, the Otter Space. It doesn't get better than this. It does, what the hell's happening? You are entering the nth dimension. <laughs> Guys, that was amazing. That was am this was amazing. He was high on his own supply because he brings his own bag down to the market, brings his own bag, saves his own trees. 
Mm. Look, I'm sweating, man. I got so excited. Echo Troubadour knows how to stick a song in your head. Isn't this fantastic? Really? How did you not find it? All I did was type the chorus. In so the Zekka found it. Hold on. How did you? It doesn't make sense. I looked for it. Bring your own bag down to the market. He said he typed it in, in Google. Son of a bitch. It's the first. It must have been listed recently because I've been looking for this for so long and then I gave up years ago. When was it posted? It's literally the first result. <laughs> have to have a habitat. Eco tunes for home and school. Bill Oliver and the Otter Space Band from Austin, Texas, man. How can we bring him on the podcast? Oh, I have to bring Bill Oliver on the podcast. He has a YouTube channel and a website. Guys, guys. Okay, I'm, I'm screen sharing. Hold on. Okay. Okay, this is ancient, though. Leaders in Texas conservation. Come on. Come on, Bill Oliver. Show your face. Son of a who has performed and recorded music with an environmental theme for adults and children in Texas since the late 60s. Go, Bill Oliver. Now show your face, Bill. Show your face, Bill Oliver. While we were the, in our you know, wilder uh, uh, activist days, it became a natural selection, shall we say, that our, our, our attitude, our approach to entertaining Yes. Uh, worked with uh, youngsters, with young people. Youngsters. And people with families. We were around them a lot. And so... Every now and then we get slid into a school, and our uh, songs and our, our just sense of editing or how to what you know what to play it, where. Wait a sec, he only has one like, girl pop up Bill. That's my grandpa. What? Okay, I'm gonna go down the rabbit hole. We'd work, work the streets a lot, and I hope this guy. This is gonna sound terrible. I just hope he's around. Don't mess with Texas, mm. Exxon and Mobil. Don't mess with Texas, Freeport Mac Moran. Oh, wait a sec. He's taking on Exxon and Mobil, the oil industry giants with an acoustic guitar and a hair mantle. That look, look at that. He has the hairdo of Jesus Christ right there. That man is a messenger, my friends. Don't mess with Texas, mm. Formosa plastic. Mm. Don't mess with Texas, water, air, and land. Mm. Preach, brother. Preach. With Texas. Yeah. Let me show you the difference between a good man. This is a good man. Bill Oliver here. Good man. Let me show you the difference between a, a good man. Okay. And 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 the rest of the, and everything else. Okay. I'm going to show you the difference right here between a good man. What was that guy? The the winds of God. That idiot. That that this guy. This guy. That's the remix, which is freaking fantastic. But this guy. This guy is Satan. COVID-19! COVID-19! <laughs> I blow! The wind of God! The wind of God! Look at his... Oh. Look at the face oh. of the devil. Look at it right here. The wind of God! Look at it right here. Look at that! Look at... This guy has is a billionaire or something. He has like $500 million, owns a private jet. People are a fleet of aircraft. People give him money... To this charlatan, this snake oil salesman, they give him a fortune, and he believes, and they believe that he's their salvation. And here you got good people, Houston and the horny toad here like Bill Oliver singing for our rights. You know what I'm saying? Snicker. Now this guy is ridiculous, right? Uh, on you, yeah. on you, you are destroyed forever. Are you are destroyed forever, and you will never be back. Are you are. Okay, so this idiot did give us one good thing. He gave us the opportunity for a remix. So here we go. Here's the remix. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord. It's about to get lit in here. Yo, it's lit. From the state of Washington to the state of Maine, Maine to Brownsville, Texas, and the tip of Florida. Today, we speak to this atmosphere. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Today, today, burn this thing. This virus hates heat. You just burn this thing. Burn, burn. I call for a supernatural heat wave straight out of hell. Burn, burn. COVID-19. This shit cracks me up. These people watch these insane idiots that go to these televangelist snake oil salesmen. Look at these idiots, but this is hilarious. It looks like there's a mosh pit. (laughs) That guy right, this guy right here kills me. This guy. Look at this guy right here. This shit is the is the funniest. This is this song is such a banger, but this guy right here, okay? Right here. You could put like heavy metal, death metal right over this stuff and it would work perfectly. Let's open up Tidal and put some uh, Perithian on this, on this, on this. Let me show you. Let me show you right here. Um, Let's go to this song. This is going to be great. (laughs) Okay, hold on. Here it comes. You guys ready for this? It's about to get lit! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, that was too good. Oh Oh my god Oh Oh, we're gonna have a good time today Let me tell you, I'm feeling it today, man Oh (laughs) Oh, that was too good As I was doing with Simon That's the lead singer of the As I Laid Down Tim Lambesis, I know I know my metal, my friends, let's go back how about this? How about the difference between what we were just listening to? And- at these lowly critters, cave dwelling and vertebrates have more backbone than you. Mm. Looking at the litter on the side of the road, mm-hmm. hey, people should be busted for the trash they unload. Yeah. Preach, litter- Oliver Bill. Okay, guys, I promise you this thing. I promise you this. I am going to find a way to bring Oliver Bill. Onto the podcast, and it will be the most glorious podcast that shall ever be. We need to figure out how. No wait, that's Bill Sykes. What the fuck? Oliver Bill, singer, Texas. God damn it, Oliver Bill! Why do you have to be so old? Oh, here it is, Bill Oliver. Okay, that that could be why he has his last name first. All right, Bill Oliver, Mister is a popular Austin based. He's still alive. Um, this is an interview. Okay, that's the thing here. Okay. Contact? So he's part of Texas's league. Oh, man, this con... I'm gonna find him. I am gonna find Bill Oliver, and we're gonna bring him on this show, goddammit. It's gonna happen. Okay. That's enough about Bill Oliver and about the environment. We all know that we should destroy our environment, uh, according to the oil companies that we supposedly support because we're stupid human beings. I think it's about time we brought in our guest today. Once again, our guest today is a very special, special man. I love this guy. His name is Steve Hofstetter. Uh, A lot of you have probably seen him online. A lot of you have seen his clips. Uh, For posterity's sake, just so that you get a refresher, I'm going to throw open the YouTubes right now and just type in his name, Steve Hofstetter, right there. And take a look at this. 579,000 subscribers. His videos, these are all recent ones. Um, Let's go ahead right here and jump into his videos. Just so you get an idea of what we're talking about right here. This guy, uh, 6.3 million views, 5.8 million views, 5.5 million views, 5.4. I mean, these, and they're hilarious, right? These, this is one of my favorite ones. Heckler getting owned. And, um, and I'm tired of your shit. 
So what he'll do... Because parents walk around like having a kid makes you... What he does is he will go and do shows and film every single time, and you're always going to get some weird heckler, somebody who's going to ruin things, and... Um, and he just, he captures it and then he just uploads them online. And some people think, it, somebody actually asked me when I announced that we're having Steve Hostetter, like, is it, is, are they all true or does he plant some of these people? I can tell you from experience, he's probably saving a lot more as well. Anyways, let's go and get Steve Hostetter onto the phone right now with us <clears throat> and bring him in onto the show because it's going to be a wild, wild time. Uh-huh. Hey. How's it going, Steve? Good. It worked. It worked perfectly. You look majestic. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That's it, only because I'm hiding my forehead by leaning in. No. <laughs> Dude, you do know. There is no way your forehead no compared way. to mine even, even begins to compare. In fairness, I can't tell because you're wearing a hat. Mm. All right, I, I I give you props. You are the winner of the forehead competition. Dude, this Although is... I did the quarantine haircut and I I buzzed the whole damn thing. You did the quar. I did so I did the same thing. I was actually talking about this earlier. I ruined my hair completely. But if you look, I did my beard, and then just kind of like till here, and then I yeah. covered the rest up with a hat. So I pretty much destroyed everything. Yeah, if you weren't wearing a hat, you wouldn't have needed to tell me that you cut your own hair. Right? I would have. You wouldn't have suspected. Yeah, that 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 was, yeah, that's because this isn't something a pro does, you know. This no. is no. This is the I've been at home and I'm trying to be safe. <laughs> cut. Did so. you have you ever done your own hair before? Is this, was this the first time? No, nor will I again. <laughs> but I needed it, and I did it, and it's done. I uh, I ordered a, a a hair clipper from the internet. Never done it before, and with the pieces. Yeah. Probably never going to do it again either. It was not a... But I, I did this stupid thing. I got the expensive one. I was like, I'll get the professional one because somehow that will work. But it turns out it doesn't yeah. matter what you get. If you suck, you suck. Yeah, it's the, the type of thing that like, look, if you get a really nice hammer. Okay. And you have no arms. It doesn't matter. Okay. Like, it doesn't matter how good the tools are <laughs> if you don't have the ability to use them. <laughs> if you get a really nice hammer and you have I'm no... Lo I'm losing it for a sec here. Can you see? Can, are you still there? We got you still. Wait, what's going on with that? I don't know. If my signal or yours? I, yeah, it was. Uh, it was breaking. It was breaking up. Okay, how about now? You good? You still good? We good? How about now? Good. Good. It's a little. It's been. It's. It's a little rough right now. I don't know what's going on. It. I think it's from your end. Oh damn it! I got like. I did the upgraded internet and everything. Like I had super fast internet before, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna have. I'm gonna go unbelievably fast this time. And then the the and then Spectrum was like, I mean, we're gonna say you're gonna go unbelievably fast. Oh, Spectrum! You're not actually Spectrum's been having a lot of issues, by the way, recently. My friend it just disconnected the other day. So it yeah, could be. It, so how how about now? We're getting you perfect now. Yeah, now is now is better. I just did a speed test too to see if maybe I should use my my phones data no it's better than my in high speed it's good now i by the way this there's a lot of arabs because you know i'm from the middle east and they're in the chat section let me tell you what's happening between you and me right now makes us all feel very much at home so it's a it's a wonderful <laughs> uh, i wouldn't worry it's, about yeah. it yeah the uh it's definitely you know how they say like first world problems like it's not just that it's i mean even in, in I, I don't know if you've ever been to australia but like strong yeah, there and if you Tell them their internet's slow. They're like, "What? No, it's not." I'm like, "You don't. Oh, you've never, you never traveled. This is. <laughs> you haven't. This is insane. You, you haven't walk seen, across Australia faster than this signal. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, you, if you want to see slow though, you got to come to Lebanon. The internet there is just. It's abysmal. It's just unbelievably bad. So, and there's a lot yeah. of Lebanese in Australia. So I'm not surprised that it carried forward. Steve Hostetter, <laughs> uh, the internet. Is very integral to uh, to your notoriety because you've you've managed to before it was cool for comedians to post their clips online and do things. I mean, I, I know I I remember seeing clips for you. I believe ten years ago. Like if I were to go off the top of my head, is that how long yeah, have you been I posting? Two thousand six. Oh shit! So um, fourteen years ago. 
Yeah, I, I started in 2006, and it was mainly because, like, MySpace was real big. <laughs> this is dating things. Um, so MySpace was real big. That's actually how YouTube grew, because YouTube was embeddable. And so, so and you MySpace upload to YouTube, allowed, embed it in, in MySpace. Yeah, MySpace allowed HTML. But MySpace had such little security. I didn't do it because I'm not a dick. But, like, there was a way to auto-reload a page on MySpace. And so I could have just posted a comment on anyone's MySpace page, and then as long as that comment was there, it would reload to mine. Oh, shit. Like, I didn't do it because I'm, I'm not an asshole. But I, like, I would have done it. I, was, I grew up on MySpace, too. I came up as a comedian. I started on my... Look how... This is how we know both you and I are really old, that we're actually having a MySpace conversation. And I, I'm yeah. looking at the chat to see if anybody knows. People are like, huh? Like, okay, so when MySpace... That was the first social networking platform. When I first started trying to get people to come to my shows, I'd have a digital flyer. And uh, yeah. I'd go and put it in the comment the section. Popular. Yeah, the first popular one because before that, like there was like Friendster, mm -hmm. and there was Six Degrees. Yeah, but and, they like, were yeah they weren't like mainstream. Yeah, MySpace was huge. Like I remember seeing Dimitri Martin did a my did a segment about MySpace mm -hmm. on The Daily Show, mm -hmm. and like that was when it was like super mainstream, and that was also brilliant because then suddenly he got like twenty thousand new people adding him. But those were the days that the reason I started doing the whole social networking thing, it's actually oddly enough. Um, so my friend uh, Justine, who is now super huge on social, she's I Justine, if anybody knows her. Yo, I, wait a sec. I Justine is your friend? Yeah. Dude, she's so my, my <laughs> I just recommended uh, somebody that I know wanted to learn Final Cut Pro. And I just yeah. recommended her tutorial and the app that you download with it for them. And they, they're using it right now. I was just talking about her last night with him. He's like, this is amazing. It's perfect. That's so funny. Okay. So I love I'm going to you a little bit more. My first year as a comedian. Okay. So, like, literally, I had been a comedian for <laughs> less than a year. And she was still in college. Okay. And we dated briefly. And so she was always, like, a big dork, just like I am. And so she is the reason, and by the way, this is, you could, she talked about it in her book. You could, this is corroborated. I'm not just making shit up. Okay. So she, as a joke, made a fake MySpace page for me. This is before, like, anybody used it. So she made a MySpace page for me and a fake one for Ashton Kutcher. And she had them comment on each other's profiles in a very funny way of, like, you know, fake Ashton uh, was was commenting on mine and and in a very like believably Ashton Kutcher like oh bro I saw that you were in L A I didn't get to go to your show I'm so sorry we gotta hang next time you're here and then like I wrote back and I was like don't worry about it man I know you were busy hey you know next time come to the East Coast look you know hit me up and blah blah like we were old friends it was very funny but all of these people started adding me as a friend on MySpace, like the fake me profile, being like, oh my God, you're friends with Ashton Kutcher? And I'm like, how did they even? <laughs> so they looked up Ashton Kutcher to see if he had a MySpace, which he didn't. They found this fake one. They believed that oh, you know shit. his zero followers or whatever, but I was like his one friend in his top eight. And then they started adding me. And that's when, I'm sorry, there's like a garbage truck right outside. Yeah, no worries. Now. <laughs> and that is when I was like, oh, this shit's powerful. And like that is that is when the light bulb went off that I was just like, this is this is a way to reach people. That is brilliant. So so I Justine had a, a pretty important part in your life. I had this is the craziest huge part. This is the weirdest crossover I've ever I never would have thought <laughs> in my in a We're million still friends. Years. Yeah. She She's a sweetheart. She's she's amazing. Uh, if you ever do talk to her, please uh, tell her she has a lot of fans. Uh, I, she already knows, but I, I love her work. I'm a big fan as well. I'll, um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell her that Ashton says hi. <laughs> the Lebanese Ashton Kutcher sends his regards. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so you started posting these clips online. Were you always posting dealing with heckler clips from early on, or was that something that, that like, was it straight up proper stand up in the beginning and then you realize these clips were doing better? Or what was it that got this to become no. your main thing? I was always posting outtakes. Mm. Um, the idea was I didn't want to just, you know, give away the material I was currently doing. By the way, so, I'm supposed to give you a shout out from the SDSC After Hours group. 
Oh, nice. That's my uh, that's my live stream. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, the, we're going to talk yeah. about that in a bit. They said we are stalking him. Please give him oh, a shout. Nice. Out. <laughs> Hello. I'm glad to br- I'm glad to bring them over. That's yes. awesome. Thank so you. They're they're like Welcome. we need more content. Five <laughs> not, days a week. Not, not enough content. Not enough. <laughs> no. We have Thursdays off, so now they get like a, an extra little bonus piece. Really. So okay. So I was posting outtakes from shows. That was the whole thing. Where it was. It was supposed to be like, I don't want to give away my material. Mm -hmm. I wanted people to be able to still come to a show and see something new. And so I would post like ad lib stuff that I would do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that would be hecklers. So that's just kind of how it happened. And I remember there was one clip. The first one that got any kind of traction Mm -hmm. was... uh, I just called it why why you don't interrupt a comedian. I know. This and story. it was I was doing a story about uh, it was a bit I used to do about uh, performing in Winnipeg in January, and it was sixty degrees below zero. And I'm telling this story in Wisconsin, mm. and so someone yells out Celsius, and I just went off about like we're in America right now. I'm using Fahrenheit because we're in America, like. The, yeah, sure. It, it it happened in Celsius, but I translated it to Fahrenheit, <laughs> Fahrenheit for you <laughs> because that's who I'm talking to. And I went through this whole thing about how like next joke I'm going to tell in French. They speak it in Quebec. Why not? Why not down here? And just made fun of like how dumb. And there was one part where and I was just laughing. And I said I was like there was a moment in your head where you thought this is the right thing to say. Like we all have stupid thoughts and most of us hold them in. But this guy was like no go dumb thought go play <laughs> anyway. I went off on it for about two minutes. It was it was fine. It was funny. You know, we yeah. like lighthearted. We were laughing. Yeah, it was fun. Exactly. That clip. I remember how excited I was when that clip reached thirty thousand views. And and I remember. And by the way, this is not like thirty thousand overnight. That would still be cool. It it was thirty thousand, like over the course of a couple months. And I was just thinking, wow, thirty thousand people have watched this clip. Now a clip like that, if it doesn't get thirty thousand on the first day, I'm it's like, a, it's, you might as well take eh, it. Well, yeah, I guess it didn't work. But but that was the first time that things started kind of climbing. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I, I've talked about this before. The idea of like, I leaned into it, but not too far. Okay. It's something that like I have no problem being known as you know the guy who owns hecklers or whatever. But I have turned down television shows about hecklers because that's not. You don't want to be what I want. To yeah, you don't want to get typecast be. or completely branded as only that guy. Because your, your material, I've seen you live. Your material is fucking outstanding. And Thank you. It, hands down. And but you, and you always don't want people to end up showing up and throwing out. I always wondered if you had dealt with this. Have you ever been worried that people would actually show up and start to heckle you because they now like this is what they're here for? Like they start. Does that ever uh, happen to you? Those idiots don't have twenty dollars. Um, <laughs> God damn! It's self-selecting. No, really, what happens is it's only happened one time. Um, one time it was in uh, Portland, Oregon, mm-hmm. and this guy wouldn't shut up. And I kept, you know, I handled him normally, and then finally I just go, "Hey, man," because this is like a theater show. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Hey, man," I was like, "Do you know my YouTube?" And he was like, "Yeah." And I was like, "So are you trying to get on my YouTube?" And, like, when I realized that that was what was going on, mm. I kicked him out of the show. Mm-hmm. And on his way out, I said, I can't wait to put this clip up on YouTube. And as soon as he left, I told that crowd there was no way I was putting that clip up on YouTube. <laughs> I just wanted him to think I was going to so he'd go home and reload for a year like a dick. And just well, in okay. case, I told that entire crowd, 400 people, I told them to go home after the show and comment on every video from here on out. Can't wait to see the Portland clip. And I told crowds to do that for like six months. And so it, it became this running joke with my fans. But, you know, this asshole is never going to, I am never going to make someone internet infamous or whatever by rewarding bad behavior. Because that would and set a so, precedent. Yeah, that would definitely set a precedent. Exactly. And, and so, and I've talked about it that if I ever even think someone is heckling purposefully, I'll just delete it. I don't need content that bad. Mm hmm. And but what I what does happen and I you know, I had well, first of all, very often people come to shows being like, oh, I wish someone heckled or people come to shows being like, oh, I'm so happy that someone did heckle. 
And every now and then, someone comes to a show and like brings a mouthy friend. And been like, Carol's an asshole. Like she can. Let's take her to Steve's show. Talk. Exactly. But every now and then, someone comes to a show and thinks they're going to heckle, and then sees what that entails. And like, I've had a couple people talk to me after shows, being like, Ah, I was going to say something, but I don't know. And I, I just let it slide, but what I want to say to them is be like, oh, you were going to say something, but then you looked around and realized that you'd get an entire room to fucking hate you. And you would look around and realize that, like, being embarrassed isn't a positive thing. No. And the fact of the matter is, is that most human beings, when it comes down to it, are cowards. And the idea of taking the attention taking that kind of attention in hopes that maybe it'll work well on the internet. And then also people in the comment section will be like this fucking dick, you know, like why, like there's no, there's no reason for that at all. And so, you know, I think it's, I think it's a bit self-selecting. Everybody wants to see it. Nobody wants to be it. Uh, that's, I was just about to say something along those lines. Somebody, when I first announced that you're going to be on the show, I got a bunch of messages from people like, do you like asking me privately not to ask you like telling me Nimmer, are those real or do you think he puts people in his shows on purpose? And I would, I'd be like, there's, there's no way he's putting people in his shows to do that. One, no comedian wants that to happen Two, This is very, cause they're like, there's no way this happens that often. I, it does. When you mix inebriated individuals with obscure places, a lot of times it, it, it's a lot more common than people can imagine that. that well, it does not happen. only that, but like I've the pretty much the only comedians who have ever doubted it are people who are doing like, five minutes once a week mm -hmm. and it's like okay so total total you do 250 minutes a year that's great i do that in a weekend exactly and not only that but i do that you know if i'm performing an hour a night 300 days a year also i'm last when people are drunker you know like your friday night late you're, show you're, right and not only that but my crowds have you know one two three four hundred people and if you're performing five minutes in front of 10 people, what are the odds that one of those 10 people is going to shout something out in the little bit of time that you're on stage? Exactly. The, but even aside from that, the preposterous nature of like, A, why? And it's like, well, because you'd get views on YouTube. Be like, oh, so for nine years when I was making, <laughs> when a good month on YouTube was $120, <laughs> for nine years, I spent all that money in hopes that one day it would work. The Like, what am I, scotch? I'm not playing the long game, you know? <laughs> like, the... But, but aside from... And also, how would that even work? Would would the club be in on it? Would, like... Yeah, yeah, someone, no. uh, someone commented on my Instagram the other day, the thing about, like... Uh, someone commented something like, all he does is yell at people. And I was like, yeah, that's my whole show. It's super avant-garde. <laughs> it's performance I, art. I just get on stage and was like, fuck all y'all. I hate you. Ah, someone interrupt me, please. I have nothing else. <laughs> it's so stupid. But even put all of that aside. Uh -huh. And then you got to go through the logistics of how the fuck would I get away with it? Uh-huh. It doesn't make sense. Like no, no, you're, it's, it's impossible. I, I, I know. It's funny that people would think yeah. that. I found it hilarious that, they, look, when I was doing shows, when I first came to the U.S. and I was selling out everywhere, I remember somebody was like, Nimmer, it, it, he gives out invitations. So he doesn't actually sell out. These are all people coming to his shows for free. I was like, if I, I mean, if I know that many people in 50, like in like 23 different states in America, over 50 cities, and I'm just giving out thousands of tickets and i it, i mean that's that's fucking great still that's still i should still be commended for that ability to be able to go oh and yeah pack out the wilbur theater with comps and then go and jump in in like the chicago laugh factory and comp it out whatever some people will come out with outlandish things but i think in your case people are just in disbelief that it's like how could these people be so obnoxious but hecklers are obnoxious and this is what i wanted to ask you about you've now transitioned you're leading the movement of the survival of the comic in today's day and age with the pandemic that's going well, on we'll get back into that in a second i just want to say okay. one more thing yeah just the idea of to anyone who thinks that i can fake heckler clips i just want to say thank you thank you for for appreciating my acting ability <laughs> and my writing ability 
because I don't. I, I have to tell you, acting and writing is way more difficult than telling someone they're a drunken fool. Yes. And so, and and the people who say there's no way that re- that's real, what they mean is I can't do that. That's yes. all they mean. And so when like look, when I see a basketball player dunk, I don't go cables. He's on cables. It's all it's all raising. I just go, no, that guy can jump higher than I can because that's his fucking job. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, sorry. 100 percent. 100 percent, man. 100 percent, dude. No, I, I understand. I, just, so dumb. I understand because people say preposterous things to me like that all the fucking time. It, it does infuriate me because I remember when I was I made the cover of Rolling Stone magazine in the Middle East after mm-hmm. f- after 15 years of doing stand up, uh, selling out shows all over the region become pretty much a household name, arguably, and incredible amounts of success, sold out arenas. I finally get on the cover of Rolling Stone Magazine Middle East. I post the picture on my page. I got two reactions. The predominant reaction was from people saying, good for you, positive visualization, one day it'll happen. So they thought that I had Photoshopped myself onto the magazine. And then the other other reaction was uh, that I was with the Illuminati. And I remember thinking to myself, if I was with the Illuminati, I wouldn't be on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine Middle East. I wouldn't be posting on my face. I should be in a whole different stratosphere. No, 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 no. But that's how you keep it believable. That's the real trick. Yeah, just because like the real trick is to yeah, under the radar. You, exactly. You you swing <laughs> for the fences too much. The same way that like there are no hecklers on these seven albums I've released, but that's to make it believable. Mm. That's just all to. Mm. That's the real trickery. The thing that it, the, the predominant culture on the internet is one of giving benefit of the doubt to the person who's not posting. Mm. It's crazy to me. If you post a story about like, holy shit, some guy just punched me from behind and and you know, and I had to go to the hospital and blah blah blah, there will always be people who'd be like, Fake. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How do we know someone punched him from behind? And it's like you're giving benefit of the doubt to the fucking mugger in the story. Why? Why? Why are and it's because people want to be this internet detective where they're like, "Let me see what's missing." You know, you post a photo and it's like a nice photo of like you and your dog and they'll try to be like, "Look at that car in the background. Something's wrong with that car." And you're just like, "Just fucking appreciate the photo." But the problem is every now and then there will be an example that comes up that gives them the fuel they need, like Jesse Smollett or whatever will come out mm-hmm. and it'll just be like, and you're like, oh, that motherfucker just took us back 15 years because he's just given credibility to every conspiracy theorist, every single person ever. And it's the worst thing ever. Flat Earth, your views. Yeah. Oh, uh, I mean, I, as, as someone who has been to Australia, I know it's real. <laughs> and part of the Flat Earth movement is that Australia is, doesn't exist, which is amazing <laughs> to me. Be like, people just faking accents then. But... Uh, I like there was uh, there was one thing I po- I posted this thing it was so stupid it, it went viral on Reddit there was a garbage bin that was like a, one of those giant like industrial size garbage bins uh, that was left in a parking space okay on my street for a very long time and the, when you're doing construction the rule is two weeks okay and so people were throwing their garbage in it and you know mainly you know dog shit bags. Mm-hmm. And so they posted a note on it that said, this is a private garbage bin, like stop throwing your dog waste in here. And I posted another sign next to it that said, your private garbage bin is in a public parking space, we'll do what we want. And that picture on Reddit took off and there were all these people being like, look, he used the same tape that's used from one sign to the other, it'd be like, yeah, I ran out of tape and I took tape off of their sign. And they're like, it's the same size paper. I'm like, it's a fucking eight and a half by 11. Who has paper that's not that size? And like all these people. And so finally, I just commented on it and I just go, hey, I really appreciate the detective work, but don't you have someone to bully into committing suicide? Because that's what you guys are doing. <laughs> Jesus, man. Okay. Yeah. Uh, next question. The uh, you're doing stand up comedy now. The Nowhere Comedy Club. People doing mm-hmm. stand up online to uh, so people p- buy tickets and they join. How explain to people how it works? And okay, is it and how's so, it going? Is it going well? 
It's going amazingly. We've already sold now, I think, about 4,000 tickets. Um, uh, Greg Proops is performing this weekend. We had Brad Williams do two sold-out shows. Um, we've had... Uh, Wait, so how, how do you sell out a show in a virtual room? Are you actually putting a cap on the amount of tickets we, per show? We put a cap on it to keep things manageable. Mm -hmm. um, because the more people in there, the more likely someone is going to be a problem. Mm -hmm. And we have actual bouncers. We have people whose job it is to monitor the stream and make sure that no one is in there causing a disruption. Mods, you know, are yeah, m moderators. But the you know, but but the the basic premise was I was like, okay, now I've owned a couple of comedy clubs, mm -hmm. and so I was like, let me take everything I learned from there. Let me take the good stuff that comedy clubs do mm -hmm. and apply it to this. And so the mistake people have been making is comedians are like, we want to reach as many people as possible. So we're going to live stream this stand up to, you know, 10,000 people or whatever. And it's like, okay, great. First of all, that's not how it works in real life. Mm -hmm. So why, why is the digital, why are you doing the digital version of things so differently than the way things work in real life? In real life, someone buys a ticket, they get to see a live show, that material doesn't exist anywhere. And so you don't have to write a new hour all the time. You're not burning any material. And so selling tickets, limited <laughs> audience um high quality that's super important um we go over how to do this with every act we we send them microphones we or or show them how to get one you know we like we look you've got a great setup there because you're experienced at this but a lot of people aren't yeah there are people who are like so so how do i how do i sign on and i'm like oh okay all right let's start from the beginning um but the premise is, is that, you know, we teach them how to reset their router so they get faster internet. You know, we teach them how to, I mean, look at me talking. I thought I had fast internet. <laughs> um, you know, that might have been the garbage truck, honestly. It Could might have been, been revenge for that Could garbage sign thing. Yep. But the, the idea is that we are presenting a high quality product. And the coolest part is, is that every ticket is the front row. Mm -hmm. Imagine 300 people buy tickets to a comedy club and you're not sitting in that corner where you're watching on a teeny little screen. The person is right the fuck there. And we do private meet and greets after that you can you can actually talk with them. Um, the comedians who do ad lib like I do, you do Q&A with the audience and it's so damn intimate. You don't have to pay for parking. You don't have to pay for drinks. You don't have to drive to the club. I used to joke around like someone would be like, I live 40 minutes north of Denver. How come you never perform here? I'm like, I'm not going to come to your fucking living room. Drive down to Denver. But now it's like, well, how's the feedback? Okay, stay in the room. Like, how's it? How's the uh, feedback from the crowd? So you're hearing the laughter from the from the chat, la real laughter. Also, that's another thing that like, how in the fuck has TV not understood that? Like that you need you don't need laughter to tell people what's funny. Mm -hmm. You need laughter to feed off the energy. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's awkward for the performer. Shows like The Office don't have a laugh track. Yeah. They don't. You don't need a laugh track. You need like actual response. And so, you know, for stand up. And so we have like we can actually hear them, which is wonderful. And sometimes make something amazing live. Someone w had a pet parrot at one of my shows. Um, there was uh, there was someone else who after one of Brett Druck's jokes, they just go, that was a good one. <laughs> like just real like and, and that the kind of shit that happens in a comedy club. <laughs> And the comedian can respond to it the same way, but when I say the reaction has been positive, I mean universally every single comment we've gotten after a show. There is not, with the exception of someone going, I didn't know how to log in, mm. you know. Technical issues. With the exception of, of Luddites, we haven't had a single complaint. Not one. So every you, single response. So do you think? Positive. Do you think when we go back to actual comedy clubs, do you think this will be a format that will be around to stay? Absolutely, because really? had, we have <laughs> someone who's watched three shows from his hospital bed. Oh wow! We had we had someone who had agoraphobia hasn't been out of the house in sixteen years. Wow. Um, yeah, we had a uh, we had a. Um, a person who watched from Serbia. And I'm like, I'm probably never going to perform go to in Serbia. Serbia. Yeah, we had, you know, we had a 16-year-old who was like hiding under his covers to watch so his parents wouldn't know. You know, it's been amazing. That's incredible, man. And on top of that, yeah. where do people go? So everybody watching right now, if they want to watch these stand-up comedy shows, 
uh, wh where should we direct them to be able to see the comics, buy the tickets, and, and enjoy the show? Uh, NowhereComedyClub.com. NowhereComedyClub.com. That's one thing you're doing. Another thing you're doing is the social distancing social club, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And that's Which we have the, with the, uh, the after party people here. Okay. So it's been, uh, it's, it's been incredible. It was this thing that kind of started on my YouTube and now it's YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, uh, also on Ben Glebe's as well. So Ben Glebe and Chris Bowers and I are the hosts. We started it and it is a combination like talk show podcast stand up. Mm -hmm. And so we have two stand-up comedians perform every show. We, we have a celebrity guest. The crowd is super involved, and that's what makes us different. It's not just people talk to us in the chat. Like, people can come up on screen with us. Wow. And so, yeah, and so our fans have really become part of it, and, and they've galvanized into a community mm -hmm. where they have their own Facebook group, and they have their own Zoom chats that they do that they hang out after the show, so and, you know, dope. they talk about the show, but then other stuff, too. And it's it's become this whole community with life, you know, it's taken a life on its own. They do fan art and they've made stuff that we've sold for on T-shirts and and it's all, you know, all of it raises money for comedians. That's incredible. And like that's the coolest part about this stuff is that comedians literally cannot make money performing yeah. except doing stuff like this. Yeah. And so being able to not only pay the people on the show but also – um, we funded the, the Martin Foundation, which is the foundation I, I founded in memory of my father, mm -hmm. um, has a grant that we do. Normally it's called the Martin Grant and it's like one person wins 10 grand each year. But now it's actually become, we've raised so much money for it. It's 20 people win a thousand dollars at a time. Wow. And it's, it's working comedians who are out of work because of this mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and the limit is you have to have made at least twenty thousand uh, dollars as a comic, but no more than sixty thousand mm -hmm. last year, because that way you need it, but you're also working. Mm -hmm. And then when people submit and they're like, "Well, how come you need to have made twenty thousand dollars?" Be like, because it's a grant for comedians, not a grant for aspiring comedians, comedians which is very important. It's a grant for people who are working or who were working and can't. Now. Yeah, uh, this is their main yeah, source of like their focus. Everything's on this, and everything's gone now. Exactly, because if you made two thousand dollars as a stand-up last year, that wasn't your source of income. No, and if you lost your source of income working somewhere else, whether it was you know in an office or at a library or or whatever the fuck is closed now, like you can apply for other things. Mm -hmm. But this is for stand-up comedians, mm -hmm. and that's what I that's, that's my passion, and so that's what it's for. Thank you. Incredible. That's fantastic. Social distancing social club. How often do you guys yes. stream this? So we do five days a week. Mm -hmm. uh, shows are about ninety minutes each, mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, and every now and then, you know, things are going crazy. We'll go like two hours, um, but yeah, we've had Chris Titus on. We've had Nikki Glaser. Mm -hmm. um, we've also had just some other non-comedy celebrities. We had Arian Foster, the running back. We had Sean Doolittle, wow. uh, you know, uh, pitcher for the Nationals. We had uh, Chris Rankin, who was Percy Weasley in Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, it's been, a, it's a mix of people. Dude, so that's it's amazing. a lot of fun. That's fucking amazing, man. You're killing it. You're killing it, brother. Thank you. Well, so are you, man. Well I need, done. I need a, I need all that these weird doohickeys behind you. Those these look are, fancy. I play music. So this is this is the musical stuff. They happen to look good on camera too. So it it, it worked out. Oh nice. It works out really yeah, well. Yeah, I don't need those. Things. No, I you, but you can get the same you can get the same <laughs> effects for like 20 bucks if you want. I'll tell you just a couple LED strips and shit, you'll be good to go. But you what are you talking about? Nice. Your setup is fantastic as well. I need to get my name behind me. I love what you got the YouTube thing. That's when you hit 100,000, right? Uh, yeah, subscribers. You're now at almost six hundred thousand, and then you have your name behind you, and you have Tech Steve. I'm like a a peasant. I have to put the number like digitally as an overlay for people to call me. I need to put that behind me. You're giving me inspiration, man. I'm gonna up my game. The next I, time we meet Steve I Hofstetter, I will, <laughs> I will crush you, Steve Hofstetter. Um, but you'll do it all with comps, so I mean, it doesn't really <laughs> count. Yes, I will. And you'll be planting you'll be planting your hecklers. So. Oh god. People are so stupid. Why are they so stupid? <laughs> uh, this killed me, man. I let me tell you, um, loved having you on the show today. Thanks so much for taking Thank the you. time, man. Really means a lot to everybody. Everyone in the comments having a great time. Uh Ash Lee is saying Titus was wicked. The show was off the rails uh from the first five seconds. 
So you got a lot of people that came in here uh, that have seen these shows and everything. So for everybody who uh, wants to follow everything that Steve Hofstetter does, obviously go to uh, his YouTube channel. If you aren't subscribed already, subscribe. Um, follow him on Instagram. It's all Steve Hofstetter. But Social Distancing Social Club, five days mm-hmm. a week. And the uh, Nowhere Comedy Club, that's once or twice a week? How, how often do you do shows? No, we, we do we do about 10 shows a week now. We're... Um you know, we have, uh, I think I think on Saturday, we've got three headlining shows happening at the same time. We have uh, uh, Radu Bondar, um, Adam Ray, and Greg Proops are all doing shows at the same time. Killer which is gonna be It's it's incredible. It's going to be a bit of a tax on our system. We'll see if we can handle it all. But um, I'm excited. We've done two at once before. This is our first time we're doing three at once. But I'm, I'm so excited. And also, as someone who grew up on Whose Line... To have to have Greg do a show, right? I mean, it's such a such a cool thing. That's yeah. incredible. And what I love about that is that people can go see the comics, and if if they don't know who the comic is, they can go jump on YouTube, see a bunch of clips, and then be like, "Fuck, I want to watch this guy live," and then you can do it just like that. Absolutely. And we have like our biggest complaint now has been that we've been doing multiple shows at once because there are some people who come to almost every show, and they're like, and- "We're missing out." Exactly. Be like, sure. I got to choose between these. Guys. I like them both, you know. Um, but yeah, this was nowhere was something that uh, Ben Glebe and I started, and it's been great because it started as just like us asking comics we knew if they wanted to do it, and now we got, you know, we're talking to every big agent and every, you know, like because because this is a way that people are on one show. Yeah. They're paying their rent or their mortgage for the month <laughs> on one show, and which is great because we have no other way to earn income. That's very true. What do you think is going to yeah. happen before you leave? What is your uh, vision for the future? What do you see things happening? I'm asking every comic. And I also have three co- questions I want to ask you that are rapid fire. But before yeah. that, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, when all what, what happens next? What's your opinion? Well, Soylent Green is made of people. Uh, so there's going to be that. <laughs> um, no. I, I, what's going to happen next? I think that... I think that a bunch of idiots are going to continue to make the argument of like, Come on, only 60,000 Americans died. That's not that many. Think of how many Americans die of heart disease. And it's like, well, yeah, that's why we have a lot of science devoted to stopping heart disease. You know what? Never mind. And so <laughs> I think that there is going to be uh, there's, there's going to be a dip. There's going to be a resurgence. We're going to have to continue locking down. Some people are going to refuse to. Um, hell, there are some comedy clubs trying to reopen right now. I I'm know. Like, you fucking idiots. I know. Yeah. And it's it's going to be a mess, and the U.S. economy is going to fall further behind because other countries are going to get out of this before we are. Um, and I'm going to keep producing online shows because I want to stay safe. <laughs> Fantastic. Three uh, questions that we're going to ask. This is a suggestion from somebody um, last time, and uh, I took it to heart. I think it's a great thing. First question, they wanted to know, what is your favorite song? I'm going to ask every comedian this. Do you have a favorite song? If so, what is it? Uh, for what it's worth, by Buffalo Springfield. What, what by Buffalo? So, uh, it's called "For What It's Worth" by Buffalo Springfield. By Buffalo, you've definitely Spring- heard it. It's classic rock. It's the one that goes, "There's something happening here." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's just for what it's worth is never. It's one of those weird things where, like, why isn't the title in the song? But it's <laughs> that's what it's called. For what it's worth, by by Buffalo. Okay, uh, favorite book. Yep. Uh, favorite book. Uh, this is not like a literary masterpiece. It's Doesn't Shoeless it? Joe by W.P. Kinsella. It's what Field of Dreams was based on. Yes, I know it. Okay. And uh, finally, what would you like your legacy to be? Um, There's a great quote from Jackie Robinson mm-hmm. where he said, a life, is only imp- a life is only important in the impact it has on other lives. Mm-hmm. And so my legacy you know, in a general sense, to improve people's lives in, you know, in the greater sense, um, a lot of people in this honest, in this industry want to be kings. Fuck that. I'd rather be a kingmaker. Um, I've already got legacy out there because there are already comedians that, you know, I saw early and was able to help and now they're killing it. And, that makes me really damn proud. And so that's, to me, that's my legacy. 
Beautiful, man. Absolutely love it, dude. This was such a privilege. Thank you so much for joining us, brother. Best of luck to you with everything you're doing. I appreciate it. It's an honor. And it's always so wonderful when a comic you respect respects you back. Like that's a that's a that's yeah. that's the best compliment in the industry. And so I, I very much appreciate that, you know, your kind words and My man. and it's an honor to be a part of this. Oh dude, thank you so much. <laughs> right back at you. Trust me, man. You best of luck and uh you always have our support. Thanks so much. Take care of yourself. Awesome. Thanks. Stay Amen. safe. Take Bye. care. Bye. Bye. That was Steve Hofstetter, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh. What an incredible guest. Let's go back to the uh to the 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 what do you call it? Bring the comments back up. There we go. See how you guys enjoyed that. Uh, man, he's such a good guy. I love the fact that we have a dude in the comedy community who's preoccupied with trying to find out how he can help comics. Hayola Joe is now following. Welcome to the <laughs> on Twitch. We are heckling on the, the guy on chat. He deserves it. Fatty, that's hilarious. Nimmer joined the stand-up thing. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. We'll see. Uh, there's, there's a lot going on. I'm putting all my focus right now into this podcast. Um, so... We'll, we'll do that. Great comment from Steve. Really like him. Ralph Caban, my uncle. Hi, Khalo. He's in the comment section. He, he's such a good guy. Um, he had the chat closed. Yeah, I did. I had the chat. You didn't see? I had it. I was seeing it. Just so you guys know, I see your chat. So I'm seeing it. That's how I knew. I got my iPad here. Those are your comments. Ifa Khuri, Nimr, what's up? Habibi, hope all is well. Rasha Hassan. Nimr, go open the door. Someone knocking. Oh, I scrolled up. These were old. Let me scroll back down. So I see your comments as they're going down. Um, I hope Nimmer doesn't read what we said. Oh, I'll read it, Rumsey. I'll read it, baby. So you guys know what's going to come next, right? That was a great guest. So we're going to talk for a second. We lost. We loved Steve. Ask everyone. <laughs> great show. Thank you, Jad. That's the number. If you haven't already, be sure to text uh, your name and where you live to this phone number right here. Because we're about to start taking phone calls. Um... Guys, I'm watching this podcast and watching an online class at the same time. Uh, dude, the, look, the chat section is the chat section and the uh, and the podcast is the podcast as long as you guys are here and having a good time. That's all that matters. I can tell you that there's <laughs> many people watching this podcast a lot more than are in the chat. So to everybody who isn't active in the chat, I hope you guys are also having a good time since we can't, we're not getting your feedback directly. I hope you're really enjoying it. And thanks for joining us. Guys, we have a... You know how it's going to happen right now, right? You know what's going to happen. We're going to start taking those calls. Before we take those calls, though, I got to give you the question of the day. So I'm going to head over to Ask Reddit right now. Let's go Ask Reddit. And um, we're going to choose our question of the day. And then I want you guys to call in. Oh, I didn't connect the phone. Let me do that right now. I want you guys to call in and tell me what your opinion is on this question. So I want to hear from you guys, okay? Let's let's take a look at these questions and we're going to find one right here. Oh, this is a good one. If if you could tell your 13-year-old self one thing, what would it be? So if you could travel back in time and tell your 13-year-old self one thing, what would it be? This is a question from uh Reddit, okay? Uh, let me, let's take a look at what some of the answers are, like some of the best answers. Let me turn on screen sharing. Nothing. 13 year old me would never listen to a fucking adult. That's, <laughs> that's a great answer right there. That's fantastic. Um, let's see. Okay. That's, that's uh rated R right there, but that's a good one. You're going to get bullied a lot. It's going to make you become a genuine scumbag in response. Some of these are deep. So this is Reddit for those of you who are unfamiliar, which would be bizarre. Somebody here said, buy Bitcoin. Buy that fucking Bitcoin for 35 cents. Jesus, $350 would have turned into $20 million plus. That's true. Some of the people who had Bitcoin super early, they clinched that. They clinched that. So what would you tell your 13-year-old self? That's basically the question today. What would you tell your 13-year-old self if you could travel back in time? That's the question. Here is the phone number. It's right there. Here's the phone. Let's all unlock it right now. Uh, we're getting the calls in. So you guys need to give me a call right now. We got our first caller today. Is Shadi Muros. One letter away from being Shadi Nuros, which means we dance. Shadi, how's it going? You're calling us from Lebanon. How you doing, man? Hello, Nimr. How are you, my friend? I'm, I'm, I'm great. How are you doing? I am... 
the spirit of time. I am because of you, Shadi Moros, because of you and people like you tuning into this podcast. I am doing very, very well. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Man. Thank you. Thank you, man. This podcast is like a daily, is like a weekly, it's like a motivation for all of us in those hard times. Let me tell you, it's a motivation for me too, because before the podcast, I was just kind of like, you know, I just, I didn't feel too good. But now that I'm with you guys, I look forward to this so much. So I, I love that it means something to you. It, it means so much to me. And uh, talking to all of you guys on the WhatsApp and stuff has become like a lot of fun for me because I used to always reply to everybody, but I would lose track on the different platforms. And now I just reply on the WhatsApp and it's really fun. I get to talk to people. We send voice notes back and forth. And it's cool because I get to know you guys, man, because you're cool people. Shadi Motos, you're a cool dude. Let me tell you, I like you, man. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Shadi, if you could travel back in time and tell 13-year-old you yes. something, what what would it be? What would you tell? Uh, I would tell myself to uh, stop trying to uh, make people actually uh, enjoy my presence with them. Mm. So stop trying to please people. Yes, indeed, because uh, at some point you will realize all this effort that you are putting, it's uh, its all going uh, nowhere. Because so, those people are not the ones that are important in your life. That's very true. So if 13-year-old you said, okay, so what should I, who, what should I, what, what is important then? If, if pleasing people isn't important, what should I do? Who should I please? What would you say? Uh, first of all, I should please myself, of course. I should uh, masturbation, feel, uh, masturbation, 100%. Uh, so that's what's important is to masturbate. So you tell your 13 year old yes, self. <laughs> yes, of course, of course, indeed. <laughs> Try new positions. <laughs> <laughs> Try new positions when you masturbate. I love how this call started so wholesome. And it's like, you know, please yourself. I see. I see. Fantastic. Yes. Oh, we got one second. We got Rahman, Rahman Akhtar in the comment section. Rahman, how are you? Nimr, I love performing you with you in Saudi. Fun times. I miss you, brother. So nice to see you here. Sorry. Back to you. Uh, uh, please continue with pleasing yourself. So you tell 13-year-old you. <laughs> no, but I get what you're saying. You're telling 13-year-old you what you should. The person that matters is yourself. You should be happy. Yes. Before you worry about other people being happy is what you're saying. Indeed. indeed. So, so indeed. If, if you're a serial killer, what you're saying is um, don't worry about people judging you. You should be happy. So murder people, get it out of your system, and then worry about other people. Am I correct? Yes, but you can start with cats, then dogs, <laughs> then you can move to people. By the way, that's how serial killers start, just so you know. It usually starts with cats, dogs, squirrels, <laughs> and then they go on. So it's good to see that you have a healthy mindset towards killing and murder. This is fantastic. I'm just going to go ahead and block you now because I'm terrible. No, I'm kidding. Shadi, that was a great, great call, man. Thanks so much for calling in, dude. Great Thank advice, you, too. You're a Thank good you, man. man. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank Everybody, you. Bye here's bye. it. Here's the number plus one four two four five four two nine nine zero two. Be sure to send your name and where you live to this phone so that I add you to the contacts. Uh, and we have you for all that. What happened? I am so sorry. We had a caller and I pressed the wrong button. Uh, okay, so you guys got to know we get so many calls that the phone starts to bug out, which is really funny. The WhatsApp. There we go. Uh, it's hanging. There's so many calls coming in. This is crazy. Carla Nakad, how's it going? Hello. How are you? Actually, I'm a little bit exhausted today. How are you? I'm good. Why are you exhausted? What happened? Tell us. A, ty a tiring day at work, actually. We had an inventory day. But hey, here's the thing. At least you had work. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, loud yeah. and clear. I said that, but the good thing is at least you had work. It's it's nice that you're tired from I, work and you're not tired from like looking for a job or something, you know? Yeah, we always look at the positive side. I agree. Indeed. Indeed. Okay. Thank you. Now, here's my first question for you, or the only question. If you could travel back in time to talk to your 13 year old self, what would you tell 13 year old Carla Naka? Actually, I would give myself two pieces of advice. Let's hear it. The first one is to get, the first one is to get out of my comfort zone. As a kid, I was a very shy person, mm -hmm. and I would never take a risk, never go out on adventures. I was like a stay-at-home girl. Mm -hmm. School, then home, home, and school. 
So first, I would tell myself to get out of my comfort zone. And the second thing is not to care about what people think. I, you know, the last caller said the same thing. I think that's, that is probably the best advice you could give a kid. Uh, do you want to hear a story of what my dad did? This is, this is very funny. Um, yeah, so I my, love your dad, by the way. I love his stories. My dad's the man. I used to, when I was like 13 or 14, you know, I started getting interested in girls and stuff. And I started caring about my looks. So I, and I had a beard at 13. I could, I could grow facial hair. So I, um, I had sideburns. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. I had sideburns that would come out to like here. Right. And I was like doing a goatee and I'd fix my hair. I'd like my hair to look nice. So my dad, uh, basically told me that you should never care what people think like that. You're fixing yourself up for people. You shouldn't care what people think. This is a weakness. What happens if you lose your looks in the future? Then you fall apart because you've based your entire personality on your looks. What happens if you want to impress people and they don't find you attractive? You've based your entire personality on your looks. You're not supposed to care what people think. You're supposed to care about who you are and stuff like that. So he took me to uh, the barber, the hair guy, haircut guy. He made me shave off all of my hair like to, to the lowest degree, shave off my beard, shave off everything. And my sideburns, he gave me like the the foreman, I call it the foreman haircut because all the foremans who go on like job sites and they have their phone in their belt, their 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 sideburns are above their ear. So he gave me the ugliest the ugliest look that I could possibly get just to teach me a lesson. Like he's like, if you if this makes you feel less of a man because you look like this, then you're not much of a man to begin with. So I agree with that was the best advice that he gave me. And uh, now I look like ass and I'm and I'm kicking ass. You know what I'm saying? So it's all good. It's fantastic. Carla, you got your priorities straight, girl. Well done. Can I ask can I ask you one thing? Yeah. My sister wants to talk to you. Would you take her? Uh, I would love to talk to your sister. Of course. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna give her the phone, okay? All right, what's her name? Her name is Clara. Clara, let's talk to Clara. Hi, how are you? Hi, oh, Clara. I thought we were going to talk to like a four-year-old girl or something. Oh, no, I'm 24. Okay, that makes sense. Because the way she introduced you was like, she's going to talk to you. Is that okay? I thought it was going to be like somebody's like, hello, I'm Clara. No, I thought it was going to be one of those. <laughs> Clara, what is it like living with... To break it, but I is, just want to talk. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. What is it like living with Carla Nakad? Oh, my God. <laughs> You need, you need a whole you need a whole instruction manual. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Wait, who's older? <laughs> who's older? You or Carla? No, she is. She is. Okay. Do you have a brother? Because Muhammad Sakat is saying if you have a brother, he has to be called Carlos. Jesus, no, that would be too much. This isn't the Kardashians. <laughs> so, are, is it just you and Carla, or do you guys have more siblings? No, that's just us. I just wanted to pitch in what I would tell myself if I was. A I, that's kid. what I wanted to ask. What would you tell yourself uh, if you could travel back in time? Uh, talk to yourself at thirteen. Tell myself two things: adulting is not that great, and I hope you like aspirin. Adulting <laughs> is not that great, and you hope you like aspirin. 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 <laughs> no, no, much, aspirin. Better. <laughs> much better. Much better. <laughs> Much better. Yes. Aspirin. Yeah. Yes. Aspirin. Aspirin. Oh I, th God. I was like, what kind of no. fucked up shit are you telling your 13 year old son? I hope you like aspirin because that shit's good. Let me tell you, that's so good. Oh my God. That's so awkward. <laughs> yeah, but that I just, I heard you say, I tell my 13 year old self, I hope you like aspirin. Okay. Uh, adulting isn't that good. So in, in other words, don't rush to be an adult. And I hope you like aspirin because exactly. you're going to get a lot of headaches when you become an adult and you're going to need to take the aspirin. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, aspirin. Stress aspirin. on the pee. <laughs> Stress on the pee is right. something else I could take out of context, but I'm not. Okay. Uh, Clara and Carla, thank you very right. much, both of you, for... <laughs> the comments se the comment section's hilarious. Everybody's <laughs> laughing their ass off. We all heard ass pain. We all heard ass pain. Don't act like I came up with this shit on my own. She said ass pain. Okay.
I'm sorry. Love you so much. Take care of each other, you two. Uh, and Thank you. Uh, stay away from the Thank ass pain in general. <laughs> she closed the phone before I could elaborate. <laughs> Give me a call. Plus one four two four five four two nine nine zero two from London. We got Sammy Haddad, London. Sammy, how's he going? Five four two nine nine zero two. Yo, good man. How you doing? I'm doing good. Oh man, coming back with that deep voice right there. Yeah, you know it. I should be doing your show instead of I'm, bro. Goddamn, with that sexual British doing your show <laughs> with that British <laughs> accent, that it's fucking White. beautiful. That Barry White. Oh, <laughs> just ah. Uh, <laughs> Just feeling, mm, feeling the vibe. So when you were 13, had you hit puberty yet or, 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 or had the balls not dropped? Mate, when I was 13, I sounded just like this. <laughs> when, when, did your, very when, when did your voice become that? Like, no joke, like three months into high school. It was something in the food. Holy shit, man. And when, when that happened, what was your voice like before? Do you remember? Uh, honestly, like, just like this. Nah, uh, very squeaky, very squeaky. But uh, it definitely helped. Uh, definitely helped with puberty, mate. After that, Look, I, man. I mean, I can imagine with puberty that shit would have been insane. Would have been ins yeah, somebody's. Call how are the calls getting through? I don't understand anything about this phone anymore. Um, I was just quick with my fingers. Man. No, you called. Somebody else is calling through, and it's beeping through. So I'm using a hacked version of WhatsApp so that we don't get these beeping, uh, and it's bugging out every now and then. So we're gonna have to endure for a second a few a bit beeping. It's going beep beep. I could actually make a beat to it. Okay, it finished just as soon as the beat was like getting fire. Sammy, what would you tell with your sensual, sexual, deep, manly, powerful, testosterone fueled, fighter <laughs> rallying voice, call to arms, army inducing, battle invigorating voice? What would you tell your thirteen year old self if you could travel back in time? Well. I feel like I need to change my answer now because at first it was going to be in response to caller one, it was going to be don't masturbate as much. Maybe, like <laughs> below double digits. Maybe below double digits would do you well. But that could be partly what fueled uh, what partly what fueled the voice, to be honest. So oh my might goodness. have to retract it. It's, it's paying off now. Oh, that's so good. Okay, so, so now that you're... But that is very good advice, by the way. You don't want to... Don't masturbate too often. Don't watch porn. I think are very good advice, uh, pieces of advice to give a 13-year-old. What would you replace it with now? Uh, not snacking, because that also backfired. Um, take off the sport. <laughs> yeah. Not, 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 not snacking. What was your favorite snack? Mm. You're asking too many questions there, man. Everything, bro. Uh, not much to do in London. Uh, yeah. yeah, masturbate, unfortunately. <laughs> When you're a teenager. <laughs> uh, you sound oh, yeah, like man. you sound like such an authority with your voice, and then you say, you know, except for masturbate. Which, <laughs> just, the way it comes out is so perfect. <laughs> Dude, don't masturbate. Don't masturbate. Use me for like anti masturbation. Dude, I'm gonna use you to plug my show. I want voiceovers from you to come. Yo, you're li hey, yo, you're like, listening to the very I funny podcast. I want I wanna I want what's your best Harry Potter impression? Hermione, mind if I sliver in? That was disgusting. That was horrifying. That was so messed up. That yeah, was so was messed, messed up, up, but it was fantastic. It didn't work as well as I thought it would. It was messed up, but it was fantastic. Dude, thanks a lot. <laughs> thanks a lot for calling. Uh, Dude, uh, you take care, man. Keep that voice sexual. You too, man. You too. You too, man. And we'll sort, we'll, I will sort out a deal for me doing your voiceovers at some point. Too. No, no. I, if you got a professional studio, hit me up on WhatsApp. Otherwise, I'm going to get one to you. <laughs> We're going to get Sounds those good, professional VOs taken care of, man. Thanks so much, dude. Take care, brother. That's good. See you, mate. Bye-bye. All right. Let me st restart WhatsApp. So weird. Some things beat through. Other things don't. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Okay. Give me a call. Let's take a couple more callers. What would you tell your 13-year-old self if you could tell your 13-year-old self something? From Jordan, Khalil Ati, my good friend. How's it going, brother? How's it How are you? I'm doing so well, my man. Tell me. What would you tell your 13-year-old self? What would I tell him? I would tell him, uh, do anything. Do anything. But don't. Don't get near the 
business school or specifically marketing. Just do anything in life. Just sell weed, sell crack, pour yourself out. Just don't do marketing. Why? You did marketing? Is that why? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but marketing marketing has been very successful for a lot of people. Well, if you know how to bullshit, then yeah. But if you if you can't live with yourself if, with bullshitting, yeah, then it's not very successful. Yeah, that makes sense. That does make sense. I'm actually trying. Yeah. I now know what's happening. We're getting those normal phone calls again. Even though I have do not disturb on, I do not know how the fuck they're getting through. I am so confused with this phone, how sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It makes no sense. We can't take normal calls and then people are calling normal calls and I, and I turn. So it's on do not disturb. Turn on. There's no reception. It's off the grid. <laughs> I don't know what else I could do besides like breaking the phone. And it's, it just, it isn't going to happen. The gods, the gods are against me. Khalil, what should I do? What should I do? <laughs> It's like equilibrium. Just uh, accept it. Sometimes it works. Sometimes, sometimes it, it doesn't. doesn't have, that's doesn't what work. happens. That's what happens when you're using a fake version of WhatsApp. I guess shit's gonna go down. <laughs> There's nothing you can. I so disagree with me, you though. Marketing, me, marketing is a great, yeah. a great thing to study. I think the worst thing you can study, and hear me out on this, is accounting. And listen okay. to me why. Because if you study accounting, you might as well just kill yourself because you're you're condemning your life to nothing. Nothing. Accounting is the but one. The it's the one industry that no kid ever grew up and said, "One day I'm going to be an accountant." Like nobody's ever had a dream that one day I'm going to balance sheets, like they've never been balanced before. I'm going to be the, the sheet. You know, it's like it never happened. You're never going to have a. <laughs> it's not a dream. So that's like that's a dead end. Allow, allow, me, allow me to refute that. Refute away. My accountant defending <laughs> friend. I'm an accounting apologist. No, but here's the thing. Who are the who are the last people to get laid off? Mic drop. Accountants are not usually the last people to get laid off. Well, the first people who are get, who get laid off who are the you, ones who are not responsible. You, usually, for the if you're in a financial crisis, the first people are the accountants so that they can get rid of the accountability and then they can do shit the way they want to do it. So, no, my <laughs> friend, you pick that mic back up and you apologize. No, I'm kidding. Um, uh, I'm going to do something else with that mic. Yeah. I think that <laughs> apparently everybody's going to be doing a lot of weird stuff. Um, uh, I, uh, yeah. I, I think that arguably, probably the worst thing you could major in. Probably English, probably English, probably if, you, if you're in the Middle East and you study English, I think that's the funniest thing in the world. Um, I don't the know what thing I, about people in the Middle East who, who learn, uh, who study English literature, who are the worst in speaking English. I mean, just like, go to America or go to I, England I, and study there. You know what I'm saying? Like, why are you? I don't know. It's weird. Here's my, here's, here's the yeah. irony. Is that, yeah. Go ahead. The irony is. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Eden Ray, I was laid off in a CPA firm. You preach, Eden. You preach in your face, <laughs> Khalil, with your lies, your disingenuous lies, trying to lead people away from a from a promising, lucrative life in the in the in the world of business and marketing, trying to lead them astray into a life of accounting and suicide. How dare you, sir? How dare you? You caught me. You caught me. How dare you? Khalil, I love you. You know that, right? Uh, I love you too, bro. Man, this is beautiful. All right, I'm going to leave more uh, room for other colors. Thank you. Oh, that's your wife that's in your face. It, no, I'm just yeah. kidding. I'm just kidding. His wife is beautiful, by the way. <laughs> so now that you're quarantined <laughs> together, you. I'm going to ask you on the air now. Now that you're quarantined, how much pressure is there on you now from your parents, the two of your parents, to have children now? <laughs> Right? Like, I mean, right now they're like, uh, what's the excuse now? I'm pretty sure that's what they're probably saying, right? <laughs> They've been expecting this news since, I don't know, after honeymoon. So. I would I would imagine, like, you came back from the honeymoon. Where's the kid? Why don't we have a three-year-old yet? What's going on with this thing already? Uh, her belly is still the same. <laughs> <laughs> man uh you guys do it at your own pace yeah. uh don't listen yeah. to, don't listen to the haters which are your parents in this case um <laughs> when you when you when you guys want to get kids 
when you do decide to get kids, have you guys discussed how many kids you're going to get? Like, what is your ideal goal? Uh, to me, if money is no object, the more the merrier. Like, I want to build a tribe. I mean, you oh, want to build own. a tribe, Just but like, your wife is the one who has to pop them out. So you're supposed to ask her her opinion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She, I, I love how well, Khalid was like, well, luckily, if money, time, Khalid was like, if money isn't the issue, <laughs> we'll just have 50 kids. What about your wife being the issue? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's there's something else like, here. So <laughs> wife of wife of like Khalil, wife of Khalil, how? Yeah. What would you? What is your? What is your belief system, wife of Khalil? What do you mean? How many kids is ideal for you? Hello? Hello? Did we lose them? Are you kidding me? What? I hear you. Oh, we can hear Okay, now we're hearing you. Hello? Yeah, Hello? we hear you. We hear you. We lost you for a second. Wife of Khalil, how many kids yeah. would you ideally like to have with Khalil? Le wife de Khalil, as Michael four said. Maximum. Three, four maximum. Okay, <laughs> we have a consensus. Um, three or four kids maximum. Girls or boys? Um, one girl, two boys, or two boys, two girls. One girl, two boys, or two boys, two girls. Okay, what are their names? Um, okay, Fairuz. <laughs> nice, Feiruz. Okay, Feiruz, beautiful name. Mariam. Mariam, beautiful name. So those are the boys. What are you gonna call the girls? No, I'm just kidding. So those are the girls. <laughs> so those are the girls. <laughs> what about the boys? Um, Khalil's nickname since forever is Abu Ibrahim. So uh, we have to name one of the boys Ibrahim, mm -hmm. whether we like it or not. What a woman. Okay. And uh, um, next one. What's the second name? Talal. Talal. Talal? Is that, is that your father's so, name? So uh, Khalil? No, my, my dad's name is Nasser. Okay, so why Talal? Because I love that name. And because if my brother gets uh, has a son, he, he's going to name him Nasser since he's the... But if you call yeah, your boy Talal, you're you're well, basic. We might, we might, if you call, if you want us to call him Nimr, then then if that's what you're getting at, no. What okay. I was getting at, of course, <laughs> calling a boy Nimr is the greatest favor you can do to the boy. Of course, you're setting him up for a life of incredible success and and just sexual power <laughs> overall. But if you call your kid Talal, <laughs> you're basically uh, uh, condemning your child to be a school principal that nobody respects. That's the only thing that a Talal can be is a is a horrible school principal that nobody respects. Just like if you call him or her Nohad. They're going to be an Arabic teacher nobody likes. So there's no, you know, why would you want to do that to your, why would you want to do that to your kid? You can call your kid anything. You should, if you have four kids, the fourth kid should get an insane name because you took care of the other three. So you're good with, you're good with God. You're good with God. Um, you've done your part. The fourth kid should be an experiment. You should, you should call him like LED display or some shit, like something insane that... That would just be like, you know, or... or I call him, him Rabe. Rab, that's actually very funny. Just like your roundabouts in Jordan, <laughs> which they just, they don't even give them names. <laughs> they just give them, they give them numbers. The Jordanian people are the best people in the world. They're like, meet me at the sixth circle. And I'm like, oh, is it historically was there like no they're like no it's the sixth roundabout that we have there's the seventh circle and the ninth <laughs> roundabout and the tenth they don't even bother giving it a name that's what you should do with your kids please let me tell the story i know we, this call took a long a long time but it's the first time that whatsapp call yeah it doesn't cut, yeah, go ahead go so. ahead this is too funny go ahead <laughs> so so my cousin right he's uh like he lives on like for the weekend. And till, by the way, before gets, you continue, like, for everybody listening, uh, Rad, his name, his friend's name is Rad, means fucking thunder. So I just want everybody to know this yeah. dude's name is Thunder. <laughs> That's how manly the Arabic names can get. You fucking call yourself Thunder. What's his last name? Khatib. Thunder engaged. His Khatib. last name, Khatib, Khatib. means engaged no, to be married. No, Khatib, preacher, man, preacher. Khatib. Oh, he's the Thunder preacher. What? 
God yeah. damn, what a name. <laughs> I am the Thunder Preacher. I will bring forth of He's basically Thor. Your cousin's, your cousin's Thor. Okay. All right. Tell the story. So his Thunder friend, Preacher. Friend, his, brother, his, his brother is Fahad and his sister is Aya. So Yo. verse of the preacher, man. His what, sister what is family? Aya, which is, <laughs> which is the holy Quranic verse of the preacher is her full name. And his brother is <laughs> Fahad. His brother is Fahad, which means a yeah. uh, 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 panther of the Nothing. preacher. Leopard. Panther, leopard. Yeah. There's a debate if it's leopard <laughs> so or panther. But anyways, okay, go. So Rahad uh, calls me uh, on a Thursday, uh, one Thursday, some years ago. And he says, want to go out with me? Want to hang out? I was like, no, you guys get drunk all the time. I'm just like, I'm, I don't drink and that's fine. Like you Allah do your thing and then we can go have yes. shisha some, some other time. Anyway, so at maybe like 2 a.m., uh, I, I get a call from his phone and he, uh, a guy uh, picks up and says, do you know this guy? I was like, yeah. He's like, uh, um, you need to come pick him up. Uh oh. Uh, and I was like, okay, um, where is Thunder, he? He's Thunder like, Preacher's uh, in uh, trouble. On the yeah, he's uh, on the Sixth uh, Circuit. I was, like, uh, I was telling him, okay, um, where on, uh, at the Sixth, sixth Circuit? He was like, no, he is on the Sixth Circuit. Like, he drove all, all, <laughs> all over no. and just like landed on the middle of the Sixth Circuit. <laughs> no! Did he survive? <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> is he alive? Is he what, okay? Is, did he survive? Was he yeah, alive? Yeah, he's still alive. Thunder preacher cannot be yeah, killed. Yeah. Rasha yeah. Hassan, you're right, preacher yeah. down. But like the thunder, the preacher shall rise. Although the th the thunder does go down. So technically, preacher down, yeah. it does work. He was just being himself. That's a great story. This was a great yeah. call, man. Thank you for sharing intimate details of your yeah. relationship on a, a, a live podcast. Yeah. It means a lot to us. My pleasure. <laughs> Good My luck. Pleasure. Good luck fighting I, I off the parents. I just have one thing to say. Yes. I just have one, one thing to say yes. about me. Uh, there's, um, uh, I think there are three brothers. They have this uh, computer, um, like a gaming shop for, for kids. Mm -hmm. For kids. They might not be kids, but okay. Uh, their names were uh, Ra'ad, Uburkan, and Asar. What? They're very known and popular. Here. Okay, okay, so for those who yes. don't understand, Rad means thunder, Burkan means volcanic eruption, basically, right? Volcano. No, volcano. volcano. Yeah, volcano. Yeah. But I like volcanic eruption more. It's more. It's more like, mm, what's your name? My name. Yeah. I'm a volcanic eruption, baby. <laughs> and then the last one. What, what was the last one? Uh, Assad, which means hurricane. Yeah. God damn. Jordanian it, names, man. Jordanian names. So the, the, it was. It was thunder. Volcano and hurricane, dude. If they had wind and they combined their powers, they'd become Captain Planet. He's a hero, gonna reduce pollution down to zero. It would have been amazing. It would have been fantastic with our with our powers combined. We become Captain Planet. Captain Planet. He's a okay. I'm done. I remember the AD did the the game. Bye. What 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 happened? Your your line cut out. What did you say? Oh, man. We lost him. Oh, we lost him. Somebody said the disaster family. I swear to God, right? It's like that whole family is a fucking disaster. Guys, that's uh, that's all the time we have for callers. I think it's time for us to jam out to some slow tunes. Uh, if you guys want to leave, you're, you're welcome to leave. But I kind of feel like jamming out with you guys to some slow tunes. How, what do you say to that? If we bring out the guitar and we jam out a bit with me and my Slimans t-shirt right here for just a few minutes... Put out some some nice musics. Where where is the jack? I should do a better job of preparing for this. Let me get the. Uh, there we go. Ah, oh, I am somewhat organized, thankfully. Um, Fadi Saab, I just came here. That's what she said. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys had a really good time with today's episode. I had a blast today, man. You guys were awesome as always. The callers were awesome as always. And uh, honestly speaking, um, our guest was great, man. I had such a good time. Steve Hostetter was so much fun. I love that guy so much. It, it makes me laugh that we're getting comics on the show that are saying stuff like they respect me, whatever. These are all my heroes, man. It was interesting, you know, growing up, uh, coming up in Lebanon, sorry, not growing up as a comedian and not being able to go to comedy clubs. These comedians were people that I would watch online and be like, man, I hope one day I can actually meet them and perform with them and stuff like that. And now uh, to be able to hang out with them and talk to them, it means a lot to me. 
I know fame usually measures success, but for me, it's skill. And uh, long before some of the people we've had on the show have become super famous, I've been a big fan of theirs. You know what I'm saying? So if we were to play some... Mm. Mm. Can you guys hear that? Do you hear? Do you hear everything? Does it sound beautiful to you? Let's put some, so I'm going to jam out today. Our outro song today is going to be a bit different. It's going to be this. I like this song. I wanted to change the pace a bit and uh, kind of hang out with you guys. Jam out to this song, you know what I'm saying? You guys can see the guitar? Is everything, everything showing? Is it good? Mm, how are you? You got this going? All right. It's a nice beat. Come on. Right? Thank you guys for tuning in today, man. Let's find this scale. Let's see. Mm. All right, that's it. Okay, we got it. Mm -hmm.
Oh, yeah. This is a good one, man. I like this vibe. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. I had a great time with all of you guys. Ah, oh, goodbye, everybody. Zaka, you take care. Mmm. Fadi Saab. Mm, I like this right here. Sounds so good, man. Mm. Mm. this shit feeling the vibe with you guys man you guys take care of yourselves have a great 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 day everybody thanks for joining us here on the podcast i hope you guys had a good time man love this stuff wills Badri, you take care nakhli nakhli good to see you as always zaka take care man lens flare smith goosebumps make those jams a bit longer next time thank you man i appreciate that lens flare smith uh fatty Saab, you take care carla nakad always great to see you here my sahak Good to see you here as well. Thanks so much. Feed your geek. Welcome and thanks for joining us. Exonic, Peter Dahir, Mortanius, my man. Khalil Ati, as always. Firas Isa, thank you so much. I'm so glad you loved it. Your microphone is big, damn. Nasim Jalul, it's a boom mic. That way I can move it away. You can still hear my voice. I don't have to be close to it in case I want to move it away. Jam in on those tunes or something. You know what I'm saying? Come in and do a thing like that. C, take care. Diane Musa. Boring UK, take care. His Pepper, thank you so much. Crasher, 142. Raul Hanna, my man. 
See you guys on Saturday. Don't forget, we got a great episode with Boogie 2988. Check him out in the meantime. Love you guys so much, man. Thanks for hanging out for the jam. This was beautiful, man. You guys give me good vibes, I'm telling you. to stay here i'm not gonna go i love you guys so much man nasim jalul take care jamina shwede rachel freja yes you're right rachel rachel you're so right thanks for the reminder i almost forgot to tell you guys to take care and always wear underwear underwear is important for you it's powerful it takes care of your needs it holds your shit together Respect the underwear. Underwear, my friends. It's powerful. Mm, the underwear. <gasps> underwear! Underwear! I love you guys. Take care, everybody. I'll see you all on Saturday, man. Great episode coming your way. Never out!